Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're looking at editing with the keyboard in Sony Vegas Pro. I ought to start off by saying that um, I've moved to another computer. The previous computer I had was over three years old and although a very good computer and handled Vegas Pro no problems at all, there's been an upgrade and I've moved to a, a faster computer. So from now on I'm going to be working with a faster computer. However, that doesn't really make any difference to the operation of Sony Vegas. It was just as good with the older computer and the newer computer. This one just has a bit more RAM and a slightly better video card. Okay, so now we're going to look at editing with the keyboard. Now, when you start editing in Sony Vegas, it's all about trimming in the timeline. So you go to the end of a clip and you trim your clip accordingly. And you're using the shift, control and alt keys to modify the behavior of the event trimming that you're doing. Now, this is great for event trimming to start off with, but what you will notice is it's very slow. It's not a quick way of working, and as a professional, and often with clients, what you want to be is a lot quicker and get through your timeline very quickly. And this is where editing with the keyboard becomes really important, because it is significantly quicker than editing with the mouse. Now, to get into keyboard editing mode, you can select an event, any event you like, so let's say this one here in the timeline, and then you need to have a number pad on your keyboard. You can get into it without a number pad, but generally speaking, a number pad is going to give you the tools that you want. So if you have a keyboard without a number pad, go and buy one with a number pad, or you can even buy additional USB number pads, but I recommend a keyboard with a number pad. Now, to get into keyboard editing mode, you can either use open and close square bracket, as we've done many times before, or if you're working pretty much exclusively with the number pad, it's slightly quicker to use the 7 and the 9 key. 7 takes you to the beginning of an event. 9 takes you to the end of an event. And notice it's taking you to the end of an event after a crossfade, or the beginning of an event before a crossfade. So if I do 7 again to go back up my timeline, you'll see that the cursor kind of jumps back down the timeline to go to the end of the crossfaded event. So if I tap 7, it goes to the end of the crossfaded event. So we can get up and down the timeline really quickly with 7 and 9, very fast to move around. And then we can take advantage of the other numbers which do different things. 4 and 6 and 1 and 3 basically perform the same function. And they're all about trimming. Now firstly, if I get out of trim mode, I'm just going to click on my clip and I do 4. You see that I'm moving my clip along, increasing the crossfade, and 6 is going the other way. So I'm actually moving the clip along, increasing and decreasing the crossfades, and again, 1 and 3 do exactly the same thing. Okay, so if I'm not in trim mode, 4 and 6 and 1 and 3 are basically going to move the clips around on my timeline. But if I go into trim mode, 7, and I do the same thing, I'm going to get different options. Now, before I demonstrate it, notice that I have auto ripple selected. And for me, at the moment, I'm affecting all tracks, markers and regions. So everything is going to be affected together. You may prefer to just work with the affected tracks. So I do want auto ripple on. Now, selecting the item, make sure it's actually selected. Alt zero, by the way, if you want to make sure you've got the timeline selected. And then in timeline trimming mode, I'm going to do four or one. And you'll see that I'm trimming out the beginning of the clip. Now, if I do six or three, I can again take the beginning of the clip and trim it back to the point I want. You can see there's actually quite a big jump there. It's not a very well edited clip actually originally, but there you go. So you can see by using 4 and 6 or 1 and 3, I can choose the beginning of an event. Now, if I hold the Alt key and I start to do 6, you'll see that the beginning of the event is locked. And the end of the event is moving, exactly as we would have done if we'd have been doing it with a mouse. So by holding the Alt key, you are locking in place the selected beginning or end of the event that you have. So wherever that red bracket is, that is selected and held in place. And whilst you're holding the Alt key, you're going to be selecting a different end point. So you can see I'm actually adding or taking away, depending on what I'm choosing, to the length of the clip so that I can get to exactly the point I want. Now, if I then want to say, well, that's exactly the end point, say just there when the water's about to reach the boy's foot, and I then do 9 to get to the end of that clip, if I then hold the Alt key then, the end is going to be locked in place, and when I do 4, 6, 1, or 3, it's the beginning of the clip. A new beginning is chosen. 
Okay, so just bear in mind the Alt is doing exactly the same function it did with the mouse. It's holding in place the place where you are, the beginning or the end of a clip, and then it is trimming the other side. Now, the Shift key will allow us to temporarily unlink the two parts of an event, so the video event and the audio event, to create a J and an L cut. So if I go back up my timeline a little bit to, say, this point here, and let's take the end of the event there, that's fine, and hold the Shift key, and I start to tap 6, I can pull them apart, and you can see that the audio is not moving, but the video is trimming. But if I go the other way, I can actually start to create an L cut where it's going to go across and carry on playing the audio as it cross dissolves into the next clip. So you can create J and L cuts on your events by holding the shift key. I'm going to take that back to roughly where it was. Now, the control key will allow you to do time stretching in the way that we've seen before. So if I hold the control key on this event and I start to do six and tap, and in fact, I'm going to tap and hold you can see that I am stretching out the event. So we've actually got this item here showing me that the event is thoroughly stretched. Okay, but I've got no feedback in the timeline to actually tell me that. So if I go back to Control Z to undo that, I want to show you that you've got a lovely option inside the view menu that allows us to see both the name of the events that we've given them in the timeline, which do not update, incidentally, what you've got in your project media, but also give us feedback, particularly when we're doing time stretch. So if I go to view and I go down to active take information and you click on active take information, you've got the name of the actual events in the timeline. But if you change the name of the events in the timeline, so you can right click on an event and you can choose take rename active or F2 for short. And I call it, I know, blah, blah and hit enter. If I actually go back into my All Media and I actually go down and find that particular event or that particular video asset, which was the kids playing in surf, not changed. And also notice that the audio event has not had its name changed. But anyway, let's do this control change. So I'm going to, again, go to 9 to get to the end of that event, hold control and start to go. And you'll see it's hidden underneath the effects at the bottom. But you can see there, it's showing me that there is a change. I'm down at 90%. I can go the other way. I can speed it up. You can see it's 109%. And it gives me really good feedback so that if ever I feel I need to get back to that first place. So if I turn this off and go down to active take information and turn it off, I actually go this way. You'll see that when you go one way or the other, there is a point where it disappears, which tells you you are back to the original place. But sometimes when you're doing this, it's a lot better to have that little visual feedback to tell you which way you need to go so you can get back to 100%. Okay, so that's moving those events around. However, there are more options. If I were to tap five over this particular event, I would go into expanded edit mode. Tap five, there's expanded edit mode, and I can actually do all the bits and pieces I need. I can still tap and move. You can see things are moving around one way or the other. So we can actually play around with those different bits and pieces in expanded edit mode. And again, seven would take me to the other event and you can play around with those in the normal way. Tapping five, again, takes you back from expanded edit mode back to normal editing mode. Tapping zero is a wonderful little feature in that it plays through about a second or so of your timeline, which allows you to play through a transition. So if I tap zero, you can see it's going to play through that transition. And I can see if I like it, which is great. Now, I've actually got one extra video track on this particular timeline, and I've got this event selected here. Now, I'm not actually editing. I just have it selected. If I tap 8, it's going to pop it up to the next level above. If I had had a video layer below, I could have tapped 2 to take it down one. But if I tap 2 now, it'll just take it back to the same line. So 8 and 2 will move events up and down. So if I had the audio event, for instance, selected and do 2, I can pop that down 1, 2, and pop it back up again. And I'm not going to lose any information by actually doing that. So these are really powerful little features that allow you to do an awful lot of great fun things. Notice, by the way, that if you go to help, you do have keyboard shortcut menu. And I'm just going to pull that up. Here is the keyboard shortcut menu. And under event selection and editing, you'll see that you have all of these different bits and pieces shown. So it starts where it says numeric keypad, which I call number pad or numpad 7 or open square brackets, and then you've got all the different bits and pieces that you can actually do. 
Okay, these are the ones with the number pad. So you can do J and L cuts, you can do slip trim edits, you can see there's got all sorts of different options you can play with. So have a play with these, get used to using them. The more you get used to using them, the quicker your editing will become in the timeline and you'll become a fast and efficient editor. So these are really important bits of information for you to work with and I think that successful editors are always editors that use keyboard shortcuts all the time. Have a play, it doesn't come instantly but as soon as you get used to it you won't even think about using your mouse for editing to accept to select a clip and get in and move on from there. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching.